Okay, in this question we've got a function f and the function is a quadratic and look at the domain, x can be any number but x has to be bigger than or equal to zero. It says state the range of f. So what does f look like? Well, let's just draw this graph. This graph here is a quadratic. It's a negative x squared, so it's going to be an n-shape. So it's going to be an n-shape. And it shifted three units up from, from 0, 0. Like, so it shifted three units up, so it's going to look like this. Something like this. Where that point's 3. And also notice that x has to be bigger than or equal to 0. So really I should rub out all of this here. So that's how that graph would look. Something like that. Now, what's the range of that graph? Well, that graph can take any value from 3 or less than 3. So what we're going to say, we're going to say that f of x is less than or equal to 3. And that's our range of our function. Drawing the graph was really helpful for us to do that. Sketch the graphs of y is equal to f of x and uh, the inverse function on the same diagram. Okay, well, I've already started off by doing that, quite luckily, but let's just make it a bit bigger and a bit neater. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw big axes here, and I said it was a quadratic, right? And it started up at 3, and it was a negative quadratic. So it's going to go down something like that. Okay? Um, be, be careful when you're drawing a quadratic. It shouldn't look like it's coming back in. It's going out all the time, like or something like that. Okay, so this is our x-axis and this is our y-axis here. Now, this point here is worth noting. This is going to be when the function, uh, so the function is 3 subtract x squared when that is equal to 0. And that's going to be, uh, if I solve that, it's going to be at x is equal to the square root of 3. So this point here is going to be the square root of 3, like that. Now, the inverse function, well, we should know that the inverse function is a reflection in the line y is equal to x. And um, so this one here will be up here at root 3. And this crossing point here will be over here at 3, like that. Okay, so the reflection here, hopefully you can see, would look something like that. Okay, so this is the graph y is equal to the inverse function of x, and this blue graph here is y is equal to f of x, like that. Notice they meet at a point here when um, f of x is equal to its inverse function. Notice here, um, I should have continued with this, I didn't by mistake, that continues in the same way that continues there. Okay, right, so what's the next part? And find an expression for the inverse function and state its domain. Okay, so for part C, well, the original function, let's just state that f of x is equal to uh, 3 subtract x squared. So um, let y is equal to 3 subtract x squared. Swap the roles of x and y. So x is equal to 3 subtract y squared and make y the subject. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say from that y squared is equal to 3 subtract x, just swapping the x and y roles or adding y squared to both sides and subtracting x. So y is therefore the positive or negative square root of 3 subtract x. Now, we saw our graph here. Because our original graph was restricted uh, here, this has turned out to be restricted. We only want the positive uh, uh, the positive values that the inverse function takes. You see they're all positive, they're above the x-axis. So what at this last stage, we don't actually want the negative um, square root like that. So that is therefore our function. So let's state it, don't just leave it with y. Our inverse function, f to the minus 1, is equal to the square root of 3 subtract x. Now let's state the domain. What, va what values of x can it take? Well, it can take any x value less than or equal to 3. So x is going to be any less uh, x value less than or equal to 3. And also, that matches, obviously, the domain. In part A, you said the domain of the original function, and that is always equal to the range of the inverse function. Okay, part D. Um, there's a new function, g of x is 8 over 3 subtract x, evaluate f of g of negative 3. 
So g of x is equal to 8 divided by 3 subtract x. And remember that our f was 3 subtract x squared. So our f of x is equal to 3 subtract x squared. And we're being asked to work out f of g of negative 3. So we want f of g of negative 3. Okay, first things first, work out g of negative 3. So that's going to be 8 divided by 3, subtract negative 3, which is 8 over 6, and 8 over 6 is equal to 4 over 3. So this is 4 thirds. So therefore, f of g of negative 3 is going to be f of 4 thirds. So all we've got to do is put 4 thirds in here. So that's going to be 3, subtract 4 thirds, squared, so that's going to be 3 subtract 16 over uh, 9, and so we've got 3 subtract 16 over 9, which is 11 ninths, so this is going to be equal to 11 ninths, f of g of negative 3. Lastly, solve the equation the inverse is equal to g of x. So our inverse function, remember, was the square root of 3 uh, subtract x. So part e, we're solving the square root of 3 subtract x. It's going to equal g of x. So our g of x is going to be uh, 8 over 3 subtract x. So 8 divided by 3 subtract x. Okay, now this here as a power is 3 subtract x to the half. 8 divided by, this is going to be 3 subtract x to the power 1. Multiply both sides by 3 subtract x, so we get 3 subtract x to the 1 add a half, which is 3 over 2, is equal to 8. Okay, then what I'm going to do, I'm going to, um, there are two ways to think about it. You could raise both sides to the power 2 thirds, like that so that you'd have 3 subtract x is equal to 8 to the power of 2 thirds. So 3 subtract x, well, uh, 8 to the power of 2 thirds is 8 cube rooted, which is 2, and then squared, which would be 4. And then you would obviously get yourself that x is therefore equal to negative 1. The other way of doing it, if you didn't like what I just did there, uh, you can take it in stages. You can uh, square both sides. So you would get 3 subtract x cubed is equal to 64. And then you could cube root both sides. 3 subtract x is therefore equal to 4. And then you would uh, take away 4 from both sides and add x. And you would get negative 1 is equal to x, just as I did before. So x is equal to negative 1. And we've solved that equation and we're done.